thank you everyone for attending this webinar. My name is Alex. You can call me Mr. Grand Forward. I'm going to show you how you can use Grand Forward, uh, which is a discovery and dissemination tool for funding opportunities. But this time we are going to focus on internal submission grants that your faculty members, your PIs, or even your students will actually submit internally, either because it's an external limited submission or because this is a funding produced by the institution. We will see how you can create such a grant, such an opportunity, add that into Grant Forward database, and then promote it because Grant Forward is a dissemination service. You can use it to communicate the funding opportunities or the coordination of limited submission to your members. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen now. You should see my PowerPoint. Okay, so uh, uh, here, let me first motivate and set up the stage. Why, limit, why internal submissions? What do we mean by internal submission? And why do we need to promote them? What does promotion mean at Grand Forward? So first of all, there are many funding opportunities that require some coordination, some selection to determine the winner or to determine who will submit on behalf of the institution. So you will create such limited submission, uh, such internal submission in probably two situations. Number one is because you are handling external grants that impose some limited submission or uh, some limited submission condition. For example, you can only submit one or two per institution. So let me go to Grand Forward to show you such uh, examples. So now I'm not searching with any keywords. I'm only using a filter called limited. It's limited here. Okay, of course, I can add some keywords. Let me see public health. Uh, some of you ask about how to do search, how to narrow search. I will talk about that if we have time at the end. Okay, so here there are, these are grants. They all have this limited ribbon. This means that this grant, although it's external, but because of the funding agencies, uh, in this case, it's US Department of Homeland Security, impose some restriction. Therefore, it may need you a uh, grant office, grant specialist to coordinate. So we can look at the example. I'm clicking on the detail of this grant. Okay, you can scroll down. Looking at all the information here, in addition, there is this submission info. And below that, there is this field called the limited submission info. Each applicant's designated agency may submit only one Greek grant to FEMA. So in this case, is that uh, for your whole institution, you can only submit one grant. And in this case, uh, well, who can submit? Okay, and uh, well, why is the internal process? In this case, you want to inform your faculty members, your PI, uh, that this is something that they need to go through you to coordinate, to determine who can submit. So this is an example of a limited submission external grants. The second case is that often there are grants, uh, grants for faculty members, grants for students uh, that are you know, uh, pro uh, provided by the institution. For example, many institutions, because they want to encourage certain directions, uh, they might have something called strategic initiative. For example, I want to develop artificial intelligence on my campus. Then that, therefore I'm calling for some uh, proposal uh, with uh, funding provided by the university for this direction. Or you may have seed grants so that the faculty members can use the seed grant to do some preliminary study because nowadays often in order to get the funding from external sources like NSF or NIH, you need to have some preliminary uh, study the result. Therefore, seed grant will be very helpful. And of course, for students, you have probably many fellowship opportunities. So all these are possibility that you will generate some sort of internal submission. You want to inform your faculty members, students about the deadline, the process, what to write in a proposal and so on. 
So this about limited submission. And of course, when you have such funding opportunities with all your different criteria, condition, and the process, you need to promote to your members. You hope people will know about that. They shouldn't submit a limited submission only on the day of the deadline and the send to your proposal office. We all know this is not going to work. So you need to promote that, okay? Or if you have some internal funding, of course, you want to spend out this funding to students, to faculty members. So you want to inform them. So promotion here means that your members can find them and take notice of them if they are looking for grants. So this means that, well, if they come to Grant Forward, because you told them that Grant Forward is the database they can use to find the funding opportunities. If they are doing searching, okay, they should be able to see your grant, okay? So for example, if I do a search and um, see the grant, okay, I probably will see many seed grants from outside, but I can also see grants from my university, okay? So for example, here, if I say university of Okay, so here I'm searching, searching seed grant. Okay, I also add a sponsor and sponsor here is my university. So I'm speaking from University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign. Uh, we are a state university in central Illinois. This is where Grant Four was originally developed. So here, when they search for grant, they should see grant that were provided by the university. Okay, in this case it's here. Or in fact, if I cross out this, if I remove the keywords, they should see all the seed grant, and these are the seed grant, the internal grant I created for demonstration I will show you. So when they are searching, they should be able to find it, okay? Or if they are looking for a limited submission, okay? So if they are looking for something, let me see, uh, let me create a scenario here. Uh, okay, so this is an external grant. So your faculty member find it, okay? So now they are reading about what this grant is about. Oh, and this grant is from National Science Foundation. And uh, they will notice that, oh, this grant has a University of Illinois Urbana deadline. This is your internal deadline, okay? So this is an external grant. This is provided by NSF. But because this is a limited submission, so when your members are looking at this page, this grant, they will take notice that, oh, we have an internal selection procedure. This is our deadline. This is April 16th next year, okay, before the final deadline in August, okay. And then there is also an institution. Again, this University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign simply is your institution, okay? My demo scenario here, there is a submission info that says that you please submit a one page abstract with the following the objective, the plan, the deliverable so that we can facilitate an internal submission process. Okay, good. So this is the first sense of promotion. You want your members to be able to find on the C and take notice of the information, the process that you will impose to coordinate the selection. Secondly, because most your members are lazy, uh, no, I mean busy, okay? They really don't have time to do grant search, okay? In fact, even if you subscribe to 10 grant databases, probably they don't know about it, okay? When they think about Grants, well, first, they do not think about grants all the time. They think about teaching and the research. But when they think about grants a few times a year, well, they may come to your website, the website of Office of Sponsor Program. Okay, they will be looking for grant information there. So how do you actually uh, promote grants you want to emphasize by having a grant portal at your Office of Research website? Or how do you even inform your members, your PIs about grant opportunities. 
when they are not thinking about grant. So they are, you are reminding them about opportunities all the time. Okay, so this is hoping by promotion in terms of they can find it and you can communicate the grant to them. And grant four will of course facilitate all these. Okay, so this is our agenda today. Our purpose is to show you how you can create an internal submission, either it's from external opportunity or it's an internal grant. So we'll talk about the creation aspect. I will walk through basically these, uh, these four uh, use cases, okay? The first two use cases are about creation. How do I create an external limit submission uh, into an internal submission? I will do this by annotation because the grant is already in our database, okay? It's pretty hard to find a external grant that you need to coordinate that is not already in grant forward. If you find that case, okay, come talk to me, you get a prize for the new year, okay? But I think that's unlikely. You would better focus on other things, you'll be more productive, okay? So you want to annotate them because the grant is already in your, in the grant forward database. You want to annotate, which means to add additional information about your internal submission process. That's the first use case. The second use case is that now the provost want to uh, uh, announce a new grant, the internal grant uh, to encourage this say a uh, strategic initiative. So now you have an internal grant. You also want to add that to grant forward so that your users, your members, when they are looking for funding opportunities, they will see not only external, but also internal. In fact, they will have a uh, they will have a place to see all the internal grants so that they will really know about them. So this is about creation, the first two use case. I will then talk about promotion. Promotion here, first, how will your members find the internal submission together in their grant seeking process? They probably are not specifically looking for internal grants, but when they are looking for grants in general, they will find the internal submission. Or when they are looking at the external grants, they will see the additional information you provide. Okay. And how can you disseminate the internal submission? Because your members are, your faculty, your PIs are busy. Therefore, you want to help them by creating search template or grant list. You can share with them. These are already standard capability in grant four because we really emphasize uh, dissemination. We heard a lot of feedback that most faculty members, as much as 80% of them learned about grants, even grants that they eventually got funded from your email or from website. Therefore, it's very important to disseminate. Dissemination is already part of the grant forward, you know, the standard capability. However, I will use the internal submission uh, scenario to show you how you can create a search or grant list that help your members learn about internal submission, how you can publish them, publish them in your newsletter. Okay, uh, let me show you example. Okay, so uh, this is an example of a newsletter. This newsletter is from the Office of Research in uh, our university's College of Engineering. It's uh, only the college, not entire university, okay, uh, here. So here's yeah, some announcement and the followed by announcement of funding opportunities. Uh, this is one series that is monthly. That's why it says July here. Another example. Uh, it's taking time to load. Okay. So this is called funding opportunity list because this is much simpler. You only focus on funding opportunities, no other news. Okay, this one is weekly. It's a Friday. 
is from the same office. So this same office in this example here have two series. And this series is weekly. Uh, it announced, for example, internal opportunities. This is an example of internal opportunities uh, that you want your faculty member, your PIs to apply. And then company opportunities, then federal opportunities. So how you can disseminate grant opportunities in particular, including internal opportunities in your newsletter. This is an example of email and your PIs will be looking forward to receiving your weekly or monthly email because this help them to learn about important grants. Okay, and another example of dissemination is website. So when your PIs are thinking about grants, they probably will think about funding you know, a few times a year. Now is a good time. The semester is wrapping up. They are done most of the teaching. They will be thinking about money for next year. They will be thinking about a funding opportunity, but they may not realize that you actually have subscribed to Grand Forward, okay? They may actually immediately come to your office of research website, VP research website, there they are expecting to see you know, grants that they can apply, they can consider. So I created this web portal or a grant portal. You know, uh, here you can put, uh, this is the scenario of a life science department. You can announce all different kinds of uh, grants, say grants from NIH. This is important because this is a department of life science. They care about grants from National Institute of Health. Every grant upcoming, here you announce to faculty members, PIs, uh, the list of grants uh, that will be due in the next two months. Okay, limited submission. Okay, this is an example of uh, uh, some internal submission that uh, you want to coordinate because this one, these are grants that are limited in the condition, the criteria to submit. You can announce that here. So I will also show you how you can include your internal submission as one additional tab here at your grant portal. Okay, so this is uh, the next case of this uh, of use case. We'll talk about dissemination in terms of create the search template, the grant list, and also use them to publish your news data and website. And if time allows, I will address some of the questions that I received in your registration. Okay, good. So let me start with the first use case, how to annotate a limited submission to announce. Okay. So first of all, let me show you how will your user see, uh, how will you, your user see internal submission? They can do search. I will talk about that in the next use case. They will also see, when they log in, so now I have logged in here. Okay, click on this name, you see my institution. Uh, this is an administrator account. All of you will have, all of you, uh, I believe, have administrator account. Okay, your members will see a member account. But the only difference is this administrator account, so everything else will be the same. But under the grant tab, in addition to search grant opportunities, you see this new tab here. This called internal submission. It has this label say beta. So we are doing this webinar to announce this. And of course, we will, we, uh, we will uh, get your feedback uh, after this, uh, this webinar when you learn about this capability. So here under this internal submission beta version here, you will see the list of uh, grants that are internal submission. I will show you how you can do this. Okay, but here, for example, Okay, this is an external grant. So let's imagine, suppose you were, okay, let me do a grant search. I want to first simulate from user perspective what they will see. Suppose your PI come to grant forward grant search. They search these keywords. Now I'm using this specific grant so I can find it. Okay, so it's here. Okay, so, they are viewing the result and they will see, maybe not this one. Uh, 
à, để mình có cái hiếm Let me use the full name so I can find it. Okay, it's here. Okay, so your faculty member, when they look at this web, uh, web page, they will see the additional information like the internal deadline and the submission info. Okay, good. So now let's see how we do this in this use case. So uh, suppose you are a uh, a uh, coordinator grant specialist in charge of limited submission. Okay, so probably regularly you will be using grant forward. Okay, so you'll come to grant forward, you'll be doing your regular grant search. So, for example, I'm searching grant with public health. Okay, I add some additional keywords because I'm looking for something uh, interdisciplinary. I'm adding additional optional keyword like AI neural network and the many others, okay? How to craft this keyword depending on your knowledge uh, as well as your discussion with the PI, okay? Uh, we can talk more about that in a webinar about search. So now I'm doing search and you look at the result, you realize because your focus is on limited submission that's your job responsibility, okay? Therefore you will go to the filter, okay? So in going forward, we want you to see that there are many different aspects in addition and beyond the, the keywords, because keywords only control the topical relevance. There are many other aspects. Okay, for example, in your aspect, in your uh, perspective here, you care about grants that need your coordination. Therefore, you will use this filter which is very important for grant proposal management called submission. You will tick on is limited. So this says that this is a limited submission. Okay, so now this is a limited submission. You will view them because these are all of interest. These are falling with uh, in my target, my scope of coordination. So you will look at each one of them for something that is relevant you want to coordinate because you think likely your PI will apply some of them or there might be some competition. If you are sure that no one will apply this well, or there will be no competition, then probably you don't need to pay attention to that. But because of your experience knowledge with your institution, you understand that this might be a competition here. There may be multiple submission that need your coordination. So you can click on this, okay. So you read about this, then you see this is someone, something you really need to coordinate. So now you look at all this button here. You look at the annotate. So let me close this. So there are a few buttons. These are things you can do for this grant. The first one called the annotate. This is specifically uh, only available to administrators because it allow you to add information to a grant. Okay, so now it pop up this a few uh, this uh, this form for you to fill in your internal coordination information. So is this limited submission? Yes. Maximum number of chosen applicants. The C. Uh, let's look with its uh, submission info. It says each applicant. Uh, uh, each institution is only one. Okay, so the number is one. So let me go back. So this is why you need to read the submission info. Okay, so I can only select one. So this is one here. So who is the one, which means you are uh, posting this uh, limited submission info. So I'm selecting from this list and of course, you can click on this, add a new contact here to answer uh, uh, different uh, names. Uh, if your name is not already on the list, but let me select, I've already added this. I'm Alex, I'm Associate Director, I'm Office of Sponsor Program. Okay, so this, and then institutional submission instruction. Let me see, must uh, submit uh, a proposal uh, in English. Yes, be written in English. Uh, three pages. PDF describing objective 
and the team and the plan. Okay, you can add whatever that is relevant here. You can get a URL. This will be the URL that you will redirect the user when they want to read more information or submit the limited submission. So I will enter this, I will enter this URL. This URL is our limited submission page here. I can show you. Uh, you probably have this URL in this kind of website in your institution. Uh, let me copy it. Okay, this is our limited submission website at our sponsored program office. I want to redirect my user to here for more information or to submit. I can add an internal deadline. The internal deadline, let's see, I put this deadline as uh, uh, January 31st next year. Okay, so now this grant is an external grant. Okay, however, now it has been added with my internal coordination information. Here it says uh, my institution deadline, which will be January 31. Okay, you also have another place where it announced the submission info. Must submit a, a proposal in English, a three page PDF describing this and that. Okay, he also shows the contact person. So the contact information, this will be the person. So usually if there is a contact of the external funding agency, you will also be shown here. In addition, the internal contact will be shown here. So this is how you add your, uh, how you add your uh, in a limited submission uh, to announce. Now, of course, if, you are, uh, if your PIs are looking for grants, say about resilient in infrastructure, they will be shown this page and then they will be uh, provided with all these additional info. And uh, this grant will also show up under the limited submission page, uh, internal submission page. So this is internal grant and the submission under grant. So the one we have just uh, uh, added uh, is this brick proposal, I just added this. Okay, so it's here. I added the deadline to be January 31st. Okay, so this is an evidence you have added it. Okay, good. This is the first use case. I have annotated a external grant that I found to be relevant. I want to coordinate. I provide the deadline information, submission information, and my contact information so that the PIs will see that when they are interested in this grant. Okay, now, how do I add an internal grant? For example, a grant about internal strategic direction uh, grant. So how do we do that? Uh, let me look for some examples. Okay. So for example, this is an example internal grant call to action to address resident and something. Let me show you how you can add such a grant to the grant database so that your users, when they are looking at grants about uh, diversity, about social justice, uh, they will see your internal grant. Okay, so you will come to grant forward. This time you come to the administrator council because you want to initiate a new grant. Okay, so you look at this internal grant, you click on it, okay. This page shows all the internal grants I have added. So I've already added two grants just to demonstrate. I will show you how you can publish, for example, newsletter uh, later using uh, this grant. But now let me use this button, submit a new internal grant to show you how I can add this social injustice grant, okay? to my database so that the users can see them. Okay, so I click on this submit. Okay, so one step, two, three, four, it's good, we know how long the torture is. Okay, we have to go through this process of four step. Okay, well, this is about money, of course, it's a serious. So we have to go through this four step, quite a few field. So first, grand title. Grand title is call to action. Now you see why I open this page so I can copy and paste. Okay, call to action to address this is something. Description, okay, this is description. 
and the research area focus. So this is all the description. Of course, you have already drafted up uh, the description so you can fill it all in here. Okay, next is the type of grant. What kind of grant? Is it a fellowship? Is it a research project? Or is it uh, something else? So this is a research project. Okay, so this is so that when your user, when your PIs are performing search, when they use the filters, okay, such as the type of grant, okay, they can match, they can find the internal grant in the right way. Category, okay, grant forward does allow you to give uh, some spe uh, specific categorization in the ontology. Uh, one of you asked in your registration question that are you searching by keywords or are you searching by category ontology? It's both. I can show you that most users like to use keywords because it's much more free form, but some users, especially experts, prefer to use category. That's why you also want to specify a category here. So I can, uh, you can click on this list to view the category. Okay, so for example, I think this is about uh, social science. Okay, and uh, this is about, uh, let's see, uh, social welfare. And then I want to add all these. So I've added many categories here. Okay, you can add more. Okay, so I have added them. We are one fourth done. We done the first step. The second step, amount, serious, this is about money, okay? The currency is USD most likely. The total amount, okay, let's see. Uh, there is no total amount here. Uh, what, it's here up to 75,000, up to 75,000, okay? This is per grant, okay, the total, amount of funding is not the set. It only says each grant is uh, 75,000 maximum. A number of words, does it say this? No, it doesn't say this. So you can fill in the information you have or you need to specify, you can skip others. The amount information, now you can add some text because sometimes it's not the, uh, sufficient to simply specify the ceiling, the limit that you can have something more. So now I realize it says up to three, three funding. Okay, so it's three here. Okay, so now this is the second step. You specify the amount because people are interested in this information so they can decide if they want to apply. The next step is eligibility. Who can apply this? Okay, so let's see, do we have this information? So no, so I will say everyone, every faculty member at the UIUC can apply. Okay, but depending on the grant, you may have more information. Applicant location, this is where applicant can apply from. And because this is an internal grant, of course, it means your location. So I am located in Urbana, Champagne, I can click I can simply write this, you will auto-complete which one? Urbana, Illinois, that's my location. Activity location, this means where the activity needs to be carried out. Okay, of course, you want them to do this on campus. So then you can say, uh, this is again Urbana. Uh, this is so that when users use this filter, because they will not miss uh, your grant. Citizenship. Okay, you can specify if you require specific uh, citizenship. Usually internal grant, you don't. Applicant type, you can click on this. Who can apply? So every faculty member, so not undergraduate, not a graduate. All others are okay, that's it. Okay, yeah, so here I have feeling in mostly about the applicant, who can apply, you know, who is eligible. Next step. Submission, okay. I want to give a URL 
so that user who want to submit can be redirected to that place. This can be a website. This can be a Google form. If you are using Google form or any other things, you know, similar to uh, accept submission. So I will simply direct the user to this page here. Okay, I will also use the same uh, URL for the application. So this grant URL means the, where the inf more information is posted. The application URL means the, uh, the place where they can apply. Now, the important thing, the deadline, okay? The deadline can have multiple deadline, okay? Of course, you always have a submission deadline. They say the submission deadline, they say is uh, March 31st, the end of March, this is submission. But I can click on this, add more deadline if there are more deadline, more steps in the process. For example, I want a letter of intent to be one month before. So let's see one month before it will be uh, October, no, 23, okay, 28. Uh, February, the end of February, a month before the submission. Okay, so now I am done with these two deadlines. Submission info, how do I submit? How to submit here, uh, let's see. This is how to apply, okay. And then contact, again, who is a contact person? So I will select my own name, Alex here. I finish, bingo, we are done, okay. Are you sure you want to submit this grant information? Of course, I'm sure I've done through this four step culture, feeding in all such information. So now grant has been submitted successfully, okay. So you might be eager to come to this internal grant here, so under in, internal grant, yes, it now shows uh, the call to action I have added, okay. However, your user will see it only after 10 minutes because it takes some time to be indexed into the database. So it's searchable, okay. So your user after 10 minutes, they will see the list, uh, the, the grant uh, under this internal submission, okay. Now it has not shown up yet. It will show up in 10 minutes, I promise. Okay, good. So now we have, we are done our second uh, scenario, second use case. Let me go back to my PowerPoint so we know where we are. We have added an internal grant. In this case, it's a call to action grant. Okay, and this grant has been added to the database. After 10 minutes, it will show up on the list. It will be searchable. Okay, good. So now, Let's go to the promotion here, which means that how your user will see the grant or how you can push the grants to them. So now, again, I will talk about first discovery. Okay, so your users can find the grant through keyword search, through filters. Uh, let me show you how they will find the grant through keyword search. So for example, this big grant, okay, let's see. I'm searching this, I'm searching, I will simulate some search. Your user come to this uh, grant search. If you have advertised, promote the grant forward to your users, they will know about it. And some of them may actually come to perform search. Okay, a uh, question, an internal grant will seen by others uh, on search. No, you will not. You will only be visible to your members. Okay. So now they perform search, they use keyword, they use other filters. But now because I want to show that they can find uh, the grant with the right keyword, I'm just going to copy to use all the keywords in that grant here. So yeah, so because of they do keyword search, they find some grant. In this case, this is grant from Department of Health. It's a limited submission and they read it, okay? So this big grant. So now they will see the information you have added the deadline, the submission info. So now they can find this. Uh, when they are looking for keywords, they may not be specifically looking for internal grants. They use keyword in this case, like a critical infrastructure, and they will see some grants. And some of them, you may have additional info. They will see that, okay. So now another case, if they want to specifically see grant from your institution, they can also use say sponsor. Okay, because internal grant, 
it has to be from your university. So you say in this case, I'm searching University of Illinois. Okay, so I will see the two internal grants as the sponsors. These are purely internal grants because the sponsor will, is not an SF. These are not my annotated. These are grants, strategic research initiative, and this is seed grant. These are internal grants sponsored by my institution. Okay, if you enter that, you will see your institution name here, and you will search by your, the name of your institution. Good, so this is how your user uh, will find it. Now I want to talk about dissemination. Okay, so dissemination means using search templates or using grant list. So now let's come here. Okay, I can create this as a search template. Say I use sponsor. Okay, so now I have created a search. This search has only one condition, that is the sponsor being uh, my own institution. Okay, you have, of course you can add other, uh, other filters, but now I can save this. I call this, let's see, let's give it a more specific name. You will see my, the name of my institution, internal, grant search, okay? It means that if I search this, I see only grant that is sponsored by my institution and I've saved this as a search. What I am showing here is not just for internal grant. You can, of course, create a search with any keywords, any set of filters. Okay, here I'm just applying it for internal grant. Alert, I can specify I want to receive alert, okay? Uh, this will be useful for your faculty member to receive such an alert, say every Monday, save it. Okay, I have created this search. This time I can rerun this search. Okay, I can also use this search to create website or to share to my members. I will show that. Okay, but let me also show you how you can create a grand list. Okay, I have created a search template. This search template means that uh, uh, this set of search criteria, I can run it all the time. If there are new internal grants, they will show up. A new internal grant may be added by another grant specialist, another uh, administrator, okay. But now I can also create a grant list. At the grant forward, there is this notion of grant list. Under grant, you see grant list. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight grand list. We do search. The purpose is to build up a short list. I have a short list for limited submission. I have a short list for uh, Professor Smith because he asked me to look for grants okay, on certain subject. Okay, I have a list for cross cutting. So you can create a list for different purpose. So now let me go back to my search. Okay, so now I have this list called internal grant. Let me add it. I'm going to create a new list called the UIUC internal grant. I create this list so I can share with faculty member or use that to post at my website. You will see uh, how this will make your process of promotion much more streamlined. Okay, so now I have added this second grant to the list. Let me also add this second grant to the first list. Okay, so now I have this list with two internal grants. Okay, in addition, in addition, under the grant internal submission here, as we have seen earlier, here you will also see the grants that you have added or you have annotated. This is one place, okay, if your user don't want to perform search, if they are specifically looking for grants that involve internal competition, uh, either internal grant or uh, uh, limited submission, they can come to this internal uh, submission page here. They will only see the grants that 
are sponsored or coordinated by your institution, they will not see uh, grants of other institutions. So here I'm looking at uh, my institution, UIOC, this will not be visible to other institutions. Your member will only see, of course, your own institution's uh, internal submission. And they will see the information here. They can click on the link. So this link will take to the institutions to see the grant page here. They can read the more information or they can submit. Okay, so this uh, how we have provided as URL earlier. Okay, so now we have created the, our uh, internal grant. We have annotated some external grants and now they are searchable. And I have created a search template to find my internal submission, internal grants. I've also created a grant list. Let's look at my grant list. My grant list is here, this internal grant I have two here. So now I can share that uh, just like the standard uh, dissemination capability at the grant forward. I can share that I can create website. So you come to the administrator council, you look for grant delivery. This means send the grant to others. Okay, so you can share a grant list or you can share a search template. I use the analogy, uh, curated grant list. Uh, this is a list, a short list of grants. This is like a sharing a bucket, a barrel of fish, only the kind of fish, okay, that is good for the health of your faculty members you will put into the barrel. Okay, they are not going to see you know, the kind of fish you do not put into the list. So you are sharing an exact list you curate. Or you can share a search template, such as the search template with a sponsor equal your institution and deadline in which range. So we have just created a search template. This is like a sharing a fishing pole. Okay, so let me share that the fishing pole because we have created a search. You can also use the same procedure to share the grant list. So I'm going to find my, this is the UIUC internal grant search. The only criterion here is sponsored by this university, which is my institution. Everything else is the, the standard. So this is the search template. I can save it, meaning I want to share it. You now ask me, who do you want to share to? I can share to the whole institution. Okay, this will be shared to the whole institution, which means everyone having an account at Grand Forward, they will see this list. Or I can share to specific member or specific unit. For example, I can share to member, I can share to uh, Professor Smith. Okay, I can also add other members. I can also add the department. Okay, so they can also receive alert every week. So now I have shared this to a specific uh, individual. I can also use this to create my website. So now I'm going to add this to the website we looked at earlier. It's pretty simple. I come to the website. Okay, so here I already have one, two, three, four, five, six, six tab in my grant portal. Imagine you have this a website at your office of sponsorship program. Okay, now I want to add additional tab called the internal grant. Okay, this is as easy as you go to your WordPress. Okay, I learned to use WordPress as much as uh, uh, sufficient. So uh, to create such a website, it's about a five minute process that I learned it. So now I say I want to add a new page. The new page is called the internal grant. And the only thing I need to do is to use this to copy paste the code I copied from grant forward. You only do this once, once when you set up your website. So if you ask your IT to help, your IT will only need to spend these two minutes. So now I have published it, okay? Let's come to the website. The next visitor who visit this same website will see your internal grant here. And this internal grant in this case is a search template, okay? So it says no result here. Let's see, it has not been indexed.
uh, if you have some result here, let me change this to embed our uh, grand list. Okay, so now I'm going to embed this grand list to the same website. Okay, so now let me come to my WordPress. Uh, okay, so I think this takes some time for this uh, to, to show up here. Uh, it's now uh, not working uh, for either the website or the list or the, uh, the, the uh, search template. It probably will take some time. Okay, we will check back. Okay, so now I want to show you how you can create a newsletter. Uh, let's see, come here. Okay, so now we want to create a newsletter that allow you to announce the internal, uh, internal submission information. So I will say create a newsletter. Uh, when we create a newsletter, we start with a series. So a series can be weekly, monthly, usually have a regular frequency, have a specific subject. Uh, that's why we create a series so we can have different instances of a newsletter uh, for the same subject. So they say, uh, they say UIUC internal submission announcement. Okay, so now this is the name of the series. The subject here, I can add some variable so that you will designate uh, uh, some tidiness, some new value uh, when this newsletter is published. Say, let me add a day of the week. Uh, it will show up to be, uh, let's say, uh, Thursday uh, if we send it today. And then for date, this is the date, it will show up to be December 1st. And then the content here, uh, here, you can use your existing newsletter format, or you can use our boilerplate. Uh, let me use this second format here. Okay, so let's change the title and change this to announcement. Uh, actually, I think I can delete this. Let me just use this for internal grant. So this is where I will put in internal grant announcement. Okay, the second section, I want to put uh, limited submissions. Okay, you can add many more other things. Uh, let me also change a little bit of the graphic. Okay, so I changed the logo here. So now next is how each grant would be presented. Uh, I want the title here to be in red color. I want the key information to be in bullet. Uh, the I want the deadline to be in highlight. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay. So this is how each grant will be automatically formatted. So now we are done. You create this series only once. Now, when it comes to the time to publish your newsletter, okay, you will come to, again, the newsletter tab. This time you will click on newsletter and you will say, I want to create a newsletter. So first you will call out the series, the UIOC internal submission announcement. The title, the subject line is filled in. The format of the series, UIUC internal submission is here. So now you can add some announcement or you can simply populate it with the grant. So that's why we create our grant list such as my internal grants. So the internal grants such as this strategic research initiative or this seed grant, so they are inserted into the news data with the title, with the uh, key information in bullets, 
and the deadline is highlighted here. Now I can also insert my limited submission list. And I do have a limited submission list here. Okay, and they are similarly formatted. Okay, so you can make any change. For example, you can make this uh, more concise by cutting out the text, or you can remove a grant that you want to save it for maybe next week. Okay, so I can do all this editing. Good. So now if you like it, you can send it out through grant forward, but it's pretty flexible. You can also send out from your own email editor. So now I am previewing this newsletter. It says UIUC internal submission announcement, Thursday, December 1, the logo, uh, the title of the newsletter internal submission. Now the first section is internal grant. The second section is limited submissions. Okay. So I can now simply send out from my own Outlook. So let me go to my email program. I start my Outlook, not this one. Okay, I can copy paste into my editor. So now this is the news data that has been generated. I can send to the provost to review, or I can send to faculty in different departments. I can send to my colleagues. Okay, so this is how you can send out from your own email. Okay, so now you can also let grant forward. Uh, let's see. Uh, where is my... Okay, yeah, here. So you can also let grant forward send it. So I click on save and send. I can say I want to send to whom? I can send to the whole institution. Okay, this means everyone who has a account at grant forward. Or you can send to specific department and you can associate with different departments with different mailing lists. So everyone uh, affiliated with the department on the mailing list will receive uh, this news data. Okay, so you can set a time to publish. They say uh, next uh, next Monday, uh, Monday, December 5, send the news data. Okay, so next Monday, December 5, this news, news data will be sent out. And in fact, Grand 4 will also collect feedback. Okay, good. So I am done with this, uh, uh, this use case as well, disseminating internal submissions. Uh, through your website or through your let's see uh, or through your uh, news data. So now do we have question? Do we have question you can ask you can unmute or you can use chat. Uh, okay, while we are waiting for your other question, uh, if you have some more time, uh, I can go through the list of questions uh, on, uh, that we received through your registration. Uh, so I got a question about how to teach faculty how to use it effectively. I think the best way uh, I would recommend to, number one is you should allow us to do webinar to your faculty members we suggest that you do this every semester or every year in the beginning, just to remind the faculty member that you have such a tool and also to refresh them how they can best use Scram Forward. Uh, this webinar is included in your subscription. You can do it yourself. You can also ask uh, us to do that and it's totally free. Okay, and uh, another tip we like to suggest is that you should, uh, recommend your faculty to use uh, grant recommendation. Okay, so grant recommendation, let me show you example here.
So grant recommendation is a form of an email like an even newsletter that by its individualized the two specific faculty member with keywords highlighted for the keywords that each PI, each PI individually and specifically will care about. So if you uh, have your faculty member start to receive recommendation, then they will definitely learn about relevant grant and know about the service that you are providing to them. And we do provide a service to create a faculty profile so that your faculty member can receive recommendation automatically without their time, their effort to uh, create a profile. And that is totally free, included in our service. Okay, good. So if you are interested, contact us. We'll be happy to perform this service for you. Okay, let me see if I can answer other questions. Uh, yes, we talk about posting your own uh, opportunity and uh, to promote, try to do webinar and do, uh, 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 do this, uh, also uh, do this uh, uh, grant recommendation. And also, if you send out the newsletter and also create your website, your faculty member will see not only the information you prepare, but also they will be linked to Grant Forward. Again, they will learn about the service. They will learn about the tool. Okay frequency of which new grant opportunities are added to the database. Okay, so now I can show you, if you are interested in this question, you can come to the homepage here, scroll down to the middle section, you will see new sponsors and the new grants. So new sponsors based on our user suggestion or based on our algorithm to find the new funding sources. They are always added. This is two days ago, okay, three days ago. So these are always uh, increasing the coverage of our database and also new grants here added an hour ago, 25 minutes ago. Uh, this is actually the grant we just added. Now it show up call to action to address racism. Now this grant has been added, okay. That's why I said earlier, it took time to, for this to show up. Okay, yeah. So uh, I think uh, uh, in, to respect your time, I think we can uh, stop here unless you have more question. What's the best way for faculty to create an account? They can create an account by themselves. So uh, each semester or each year, you can announce grant forward through an email. In the email, you will tell them how they can sign up. So everyone with your institutional email address can sign up. However, we also provide the service, again, it's free of charge, to automatically create the, uh, not only accounts, but actually also profile for all your faculty members. So if you give us a list of faculty names, or if you tell us that we can create the uh, account and profile for every faculty at your institutional website, then we can do that without your additional effort. So yes, we can do that automatically. Okay, do we have more questions from the audience? Okay, good. Uh, sorry to be in the way of your lunch. Thanks for doing lunch with me. Okay, so I hope you learned something useful. Uh, we will be collecting your feedback. Uh, thank you very much. You have a good coming weekend. Bye-bye.